here I have the standard FreeSky X4R S-Bus receiver. I have a build I need to do that requires me to de-pin this receiver. It is possible to buy a naked version that already has the pins, well the pins were never installed and it has the cover removed, but I'll show you the process I use to de-pin them. First thing I need to do is take the receiver and uh, remove the cardboard cover. Very easy, just unfolds like that. It's uh, stuck to that with some double sided tape. So there's the cover out of the way. Uh, hang on to this or the manual, it reminds you uh, which pins uh, do what on the receiver. Uh, so here we have it, and uh, I've got my soldering iron heating up, and I'm going to remove, uh, remove these pins. Now, the first thing is to remove these black plastic spaces on the pins. I just use pointy nose pliers. Sometimes it pays to just use side cutters to break them in a couple of spots. And they can be slid off. Now when, when uh, soldering, I normally use uh, quite small tips like these ones on my soldering iron. When I'm desoldering, I prefer to use a medium uh, broad side uh, tip like this one and uh, it helps to transfer the heat better. I'm running my soldering iron at about 430 degrees Celsius, quite hot, but there's um, a lot of, uh, uh, sorry, there's no lead in the solder, so uh, it does take a bit more to melt it. Uh, place this in the holder. <coughs> One thing you need to desolder is solder. Uh, it helps transfer the heat. Put a bit on the end here. Grab hold of the pin from the other side and heat it up and pull it through. And it's simple as that. There we go. That's the pins removed. Now I'm not going to use any of them except the uh, the S bus uh, pins, which let's get something to use as a pointer. These uh, three here, one, two, three, along the front edge here, one, two, three, are the three S bus uh, pins. Uh, the signal on this side here the positive in the middle and the uh, earth or ground on this side. So I need to remove the solder from those three holes, the rest uh, I don't care about. Now I'll take a solder sucker, it's uh, charged, ready to go, hold it on one side, take the soldering iron, a little bit of solder, Heat it up and suck the solder out. It's uh, not all the solder from that one, it's started to get a build up in there from past jobs. But, uh, go and there we have it the solder is removed from those three holes now I'll prepare my servo lead I've uh, cut it to the right length So 
So that shows the order of the wiring. The orange uh, signal wire is closest to the white connector and the red wire is in the centre and the brown ground or earth wire is on the outside. Soldering is complete. Cut some heat shrink. This is the 16 millimeter heat shrink. Um, it actually, while flat, it actually measures about uh, 27 millimeters across, and uh, this is just the right size for the job. Clear is uh, is the best choice because these do have an LED on them. And uh, they also have the button, makes it easier to see the LED and the button. My electric heat gun is currently out of action. A nice uh, sharp hobby knife. If, uh, I'm going to cut out around this connector because I will be using it. for the telemetry, but if you're not using telemetry then just leave it covered up. And the job is complete. Now if you've ever damaged a, uh, a camera cable for a HS 1177 you can typically use the one that uh, comes with the, the, or the tuning cable extension or these, uh, these FreeSky X4R SBUS telemetry port cables uh, also use the same plug but keep in mind that the order of the wiring is different so I'll lay this one down there on the left uh, it's yellow red black white whereas the uh, 1177 cable is uh, red black yellow so pretty much all out of order but if you did want to use this cable for the HS 1177 uh, simply take a sharp scalpel and you can remove the connectors just by lifting up the little plastic tab enough and then you can pull the pull the wire out and uh, do that all the way along and then push them back in in the order uh, that they need to be for the 1177